He's already on two PR bonds and gets charged with another felony, auto theft. That should have been it. So he gets back out again. We have people that have been uh, booked for murder, charged with murder, released while charged with murder, and murdering again. So it is like Groundhog Day, not just here in Harris County, but it's starting to happen around the country. That is just some of the unified frustration coming from longtime victim rights advocate Andy Kahn, now the director of victim services and advocacy at Crime Stoppers of Houston, and HPD Chief Art Acevedo in agreement about the challenges of felons getting out on bond not once or twice, but more often, and then commit more crime. Joining me to talk about this problem that has been under the radar for many, but not for advocates, is Rania Mancarios, the CEO of Crime Stoppers of Houston. Good morning, Rania. Good to see you. So this has been around for a long time. Talk about why this is such an issue and what your organization is helping to try to do about it. You know, it's an issue we, we started noticing over a year ago, about two years ago, in fact. And we said, why are we looking at, you know, we're looking for John Smith. We know that law enforcement arrested John Smith. And then a few months later, we're getting a report that we're looking for John Smith again on another felony offense. Something is not adding up here. And what we realized that there was this push um, amongst the criminal justice, you know, there's reform happening across this country to release. We're just going to continue to release violent, habitual, offenders and I want to make it clear I get so many people that call me or email me after I talk about this and say you know we've got to have grace and compassion for the mom who just stole you know toilet paper from the local grocery store um, for the first time offender that's just trying to make ends meet for misdemeanors for misdemeanor crimes we're not talking about any of that we are talking specifically about violent repeated felony offenders who are murdering, raping, killing, they're, you know, involved in trafficking. They are doing the worst of the worst and law enforcement's going out of their way. They are arresting these people. They are going through the criminal justice system only to turn around and be released. And then they go back out and commit another felony offense. We've had enough. We've heard from enough victims in the community that say we cannot function this way. And so we've been really active about collecting data, diving into the information and making the community aware. So now going forward here, make me aware about this. Is a bond setting, is it always a discretion of the judge? It is. And what we're finding is that, you know, with any court, you can have a judge, you can have a visiting judge, and of course we vote for our judges, or you can have a magistrate who's appointed. And a lot of times we don't even know who that person is. So Senator Betancourt has recently issued legislation that will change that, that will say only a presiding judge can issue um, a, a declaration on a PR bond, that it can't be decided by a magistrate or somebody that's not actually voted for by the people. So it is... It the question then becomes when it can be taken away. I know the legislature is talking about doing some things as well. Is that an avenue? Could the legislative body take away the rights of a judge to actually do what judges are supposed to do, which is judge? And that's the thing. That's what they're going to they're going to go through this whole hearing, this whole um, session that we're about to approach on. That's going to be one of the biggest issues from Governor Abbott, who is using our data uh, to Senator Betancourt, uh, Senator Huffman, Senator Whitmire. This is a bipartisan effort to say, look, this is a disaster. Some have called it a crime bomb because what we're what we're dealing with is a culture that is one punishing police. Um, and again, we all agree that, you know, law enforcement reform is necessary and Crime Stoppers was on that committee put together by Mayor Turner. Reform is critical. But we're, this culture of punishing police, having them operate with one hand tied behind their back, while you're then dealing with a criminal justice system that is re repeatedly releasing, not even doing risk assessments anymore, the basics, not even doing risk, risk assessments, releasing these violent offenders back into the community under this notion of, I, I'm assuming, or what I'm hearing is social justice. And mm. Cambrell is a, a daughter of an immigrant, you know, um, a, a, with a heart for all minorities across this country. I think that is fake social justice, because I'll tell you, Andy has tracked just 91, just 91, that's an unbelievable number. 91 men, women, and children who have paid the ultimate price for these decisions. They have lost their lives. Mm. Three, three women who were pregnant. And of that 91, I'll give you the exact number, 69, 69 were minors, 70 minorities, 75% were minorities. So we're releasing these um, these violent felony offenders and they're going back into the community and they're hurting a, a large majority of those victims are minorities. So we've got to be protecting all of our citizens. What can viewers do uh, of this program to help you in this uh, effort to get this changed? 
understand the issues. You know, we're we're sort of living in these echo chambers right now where all we want to do is blame the DA. Okay, all we want to do now is blame the chief. Okay, now all we want to do is blame the governor. We want everyone to stop and we want everybody to, to understand what's going on. We want them to follow the cases. We are pushing them out almost daily now, unfortunately, on what we're seeing. And then I'd love for the media and as they do their incredible reporting and we love our local media partners for when you are sharing these stories for you to to make it clear for the audience who is the judge what court was it in was it a presiding judge uh what was it a magistrate who just made this decision uh what did the da ask for even just in bullet points at the end because more and more people are calling us than ever before saying what's happening with crime in harris county we've lived here our whole lives we've never seen it like this what is going on and when you start to explain it they say there's no way there's no way our elected officials have allowed this and what i've always said is we have the best elected officials either this is an area where they are pushing for an agenda um because they don't understand the ramifications which right. is extremely frightening or they're pushing for another reason, which is also extremely frightening. So you got to come back uh, next month. Come back one month from now. Let's talk about your safe schools and everything else that you continue to do. You have so much going on. I don't know how you manage to do it. Don't know when you sleep, all this stuff that's going on. But we got a lot to talk about. Let's do that next month. Promise to come back next month? You got it. Okay. Anytime. Thank Anytime. you. I'll make, I'll make sure we put your Crime Stoppers information on my Newsmakers page on clicktoyoucin.com. Thank you, Rania, for all you do.